We had a lackluster day on the markets, uh, flat in fact, uh, just going through some of the biggest movements, Goldfields down 2%, Anglo down 2 Harmony down 1.67%, financials steaming ahead in today's session. Uh, but it seems that a lot is really going to be focused on whether Ben Bernanke is going to continue or end quantitative easing. Is that the big buzz of the week? It is. I don't think it should be, but everybody else says it should be. To me, he, um, Ben Bernanke has been probably the best advertised central banker we've ever had. Although Greenspan came pretty close, but Benke's even improved on Greenspan. So 30 years ago, you didn't have a clue what the central banker was going to do. And now you know exactly what he's going to do. And he tells you all the variables that he watches before he does something. Now, I think Ben Bernanke has been very clear about QE2, just like QE1. We're trying to save capitalism. So he says we're going to spend $600 billion right up until June. I don't remember if it's beginning or middle of June. Now everybody's asking before he's even done spending that $600 billion, if it's not enough, Ben, are you going to spend more? Now, he actually doesn't know. Most fund managers don't really know what they're going to do a month or two months out because the, the world situation could change so much. So Bernanke is probably the world's greatest fund manager. He knows what he'd like to do if everything stays as it is or if everything goes according to plan. But right now, he's got another month and a half before he decides. I think because the US stock market has yeah. recuperated so much that if he puts another QE3 on, um, I think it's it's a it's red lights flashing so, all over so the Pete, world. So, Pete, I mean, what do you so system. what do you do now at this point? When you look at the JSE all share, we're sitting at thirty two thousand six hundred and sixty eight. Uh, things not looking that cheap. We've got we still have cheap money that is uh, floating around. Some of it landing up in South Africa. Uh, would you be perhaps uh, downloading or downgrading your exposure to equities in anticipation of the end of QE? What would your move be at this point? I think you read my mind, Delaney. Yes. If I say, why is the market where it is today? Why is our market up 500% in dollar terms from eight years ago? It's because cheap money, high commodity prices. Now, these are extraordinary high commodity prices. These are unbelievably cheap interest rates. So neither of those sustainable in my view. So a market that's up 500% in dollar terms also mm -hmm. isn't sustainable in my view. So I'd be looking at taking a lot of money off the table and hedging in a variety of ways. Well, Peter, you also sent me an interesting article a little earlier, the University of Texas, I think it is, uh, buying $1 billion worth of gold. Uh, when you see central banks and universities buying gold at the top, is that the time that you start running? <laughs> Boy, it is in my view, yeah. When University of Texas, probably the heart of capitalism in the United States, when they're buying a cubic meter of gold, man, they've really thrown in the towel. That's almost panic stations, I think. So yeah, I, um, I think these are big warning lights. I can hear horns blowing, I see lights, <laughs> not very far down the road. So where do you put your this money, just, Pete? Where do you put your money, very quickly? I'd spread it all over the place. Even cash might not be bad for a little bit. And our market relative to international indices, like yeah. Japan, like the UK, yeah. even to the US, our market's gone up 300% to the US in just the last seven, eight years. You know, maybe, maybe put a little bit in the US, put a fair amount in cash. Um, it's always good for stock picking. There's yeah. some really bombed out shares that have yeah. actually gone down the last three years instead of up.